Be sure to check out my new book, Micro Shelters, available in September, Amazon.com and elsewhere. And coming up in September as well, Tiny House Summer Camp 3. So many guest speakers, so much building, so much going on that we can't fit it all on one flyer. RelaxShacks.com for info. All right, we're here with Rob Scott from Studio Trucks. We're uh, down under. Yeah, as you can see right behind Dustin, obviously, both of some, Sydney, Australia. Rob is helping us with a hands-on workshop we had, thanks to Kat Karina and many other people who helped us, uh, help organize this workshop. Built a tiny house uh, downtown here in Sydney, one of the first in the area. But Rob came out to help, and Rob's involved. He's been building uh, tiny dwellings and wheels for quite some time now. And why don't you give us a little background about what you do? Okay, um, I studied architecture and um, learned how to build as a builder's labourer, but I couldn't sit in an office all day, so I went out and did lots of other things for, for years and ended up on a farm. And in the drought, uh, we had a 13 year drought, and uh, I needed to get some other employment, so I started building again. And um, then, when the kids needed um, some more room, we got a two bedroom house, three kids, so we needed an extension, and I thought, I'm not going to extend. I'm going to build a little house on the back of one of the old farm trucks. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I started researching the dead and getting ideas together and um, built one on the back of the, of the uh, truck and sure enough, it got stepped up straight away for a bedroom. So, um, then I just kept building more and more. You do them on classic trucks too. Is that a conscious choice or more you, you find them more affordable or just the look? Is that what you're going for? Um, I'm going for the look. I love the old benefits. Uh, that you yeah. Put that hat on. It'd be like um, you're making this poor guy look at the autumn sun. <laughs> it's, it's all like sweaty. It's American. You're making this poor guy look at the sun. The sun's about to go. Oh, now we're losing it. Now okay. we can't, now so, we can't even see you. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the, the shape of the old trucks. It's a shame that they aren't in better nick. Um, that they can't drive on the road. Yeah. I just wouldn't trust them on a long journey. Okay. But uh, they're great for moving around the farm or somebody else's farm. So when I was researching bases as well, I wanted something portable, and it was going to cost more to to buy or build a, a metal frame base than it was to buy the old trucks. So the old trucks were a double solution. They got the base, and I could then move them easily. And they have style. They have those uh, those old lines, oh, like yeah. you said. Yeah. 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 You support the log typically over the cab of the truck. Yeah. How far does that overextend, and how do you further support it from the bumper side? Okay, I take the uh, the sleeping loft right out to the front of the uh, front bumper bar. Of the of the, uh, the truck and just put two skinny little poles up, which people always say aren't strong enough. But if you do them fast, they are. <laughs> well, you're building you're building lightweight too. You're not building this with like you know two, yeah. by, two by tens and big you know gum yeah. tree girders or anything like that. I'd imagine. Sometimes I like to put old bridge beams in them, but they don't. Yeah, they're a bit too heavy. Now, what about the siding? You got a lot of the photos I've seen you use corrugated metal as a siding. Yeah. Um, is that kind of the standard for your builds? Corrugated iron is a traditional. Uh, Nearly all the roofs in Australia, if they're not tiled, they'll be corrugated iron. Yeah. And especially for farm buildings, all the sheds are corrugated iron sheds. So, so it, it fitted in with the rural feel of the area. And also, I love corrugated iron because there's no maintenance. Once it's there on a vertical surface, it just won't rust because um, the water just drains straight off and they'll be there for hundreds of years. And you could, you could in theory, you know, drive golf balls against it and have no problem. Not that you want to do that because you might miss and smash some of the nice windows out. Yeah, it's bomb proof. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate maintenance. I like to just do it once and do it properly and walk away. Why not? Now, now, from a creative aspect, we were talking about this a little bit behind the scenes. You know, aside from, we kind of talked about why you're doing it, but as, as your own boss, let's say, yeah. beyond that, what's your attraction to doing this for, for a living? Because you're, you're kind of, this is what you're well, doing now. I don't like working for the man, so I've always yeah. worked for myself, so, and I don't like being stuck in one project forever, so to be able to build, to do a build project, and then stop, and I can either go and do some other work, or take a break, Yeah. and then choose. Go on a walkabout. I want to walk about, yeah, I got to walk about. <laughs> <laughs> I want a ferry. Every, every Australian watching is like, he's just butchering the uh, stereotypical, <laughs> stereotypical <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to learn some new words out here, and we're fa <laughs> failing miserably. No, I'm sorry, but continue, I'm cutting you off here. Yeah, I like to be able to do one, one job at a time and then have it finished and that's complete and then I can start something new when I want to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think a lot of builders I interview are like that. It's almost like the ADD, Attention yeah. Deficit Disorder approach, where you just want to jump around for projects to keep exactly. it unique yeah. and, and keep it fresh. Creative, cause if, like I've made, um, I'm running little tiny house workshops at the moment, I'm teaching yeah. people how to build them and uh, we've just done the third one. Yeah. And for the fourth one, it's like 
I'm going to pull my hair out if we do the same thing again. So you can, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm researching getting a trailer this time to put it on uh, proper wheels so we can have it on the road and add some uh, new style into it. Uh, so I don't die of boredom. You, and you've done well too, because I've seen a lot of your workshops listed on the uh, Tiny Houses Australia yeah. board. You've, uh, you've been packing all of them, which yeah. is great. You keep them on the smaller side too, which I think is beneficial. Yeah, we have a maximum of 10. I, yeah. just, I can't uh, look after more than 10 people. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the spread, like where the workshop is <laughs> sitting, because I know you have, you're telling me you have like 400 some odd acres. Oh, uh, yeah, we've got a, we're yeah. 440 acres. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, how and, many uh, chickens? Uh, my daughter's so, got about 2,000 uh, organic free range. Now we've got uh, organic cattle and sheep, and my wife's got pigs. So we've got we've got, we've got some horses and goats. I milk goats and cow each morning. Uh, while he builds yeah. while and build. teaches. So yeah, when people come, they 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 Great live in. Farm hands. Yeah. Oh well, don't get much help on that. I work I work the participants too hard to have them help on the farm. But yeah, they, they stay in the tiny houses we build and uh, we feed them and all look after them. When's the next workshop? Anything planned for the future? Uh, I'm looking at May. Okay. But don't hold me to it. <laughs> All right. And if they want more information, again, uh, Studio Trucks on Facebook. Uh, and what else? Studio Trucks on Facebook and hollyburton.com.au is our farm page. And we also do advertise the courses on Tiny Houses Australia Facebook, Facebook page. All right. Once again, Rob Scott, hey, thank you very much. That's a